is it that the president was still tired 12 days after returning from Europe, uh, had a cold, but then went to the Waffle House, and then the following day staged such a huge comeback that he gave those North Carolina remarks. Like, help us understand. Have you had a cold before? Of course I have. Okay, before, so you probably, well, well, come on, come on, Jackie. Let's be very, let's, let's be. 12 days I, after I, he returned, though. But and you also. jet lag yesterday. Hold on a second. There's a cold, there's a jet lag, you combine that, he continues to work on the with for the American people day in and day out around the clock. Things happen. Is there any discussion that if the president were to uh, suspend his campaign that he would also resign? Is are there any discussions no, about no, absolutely the vice not. president assuming his duties? Absolutely not. I'm about to share with you one of the most incredible stories I've ever heard that exemplifies why I think the choice is so clear in November about Trump's leadership, it's going to absolutely blow your mind. If you haven't seen this, uh, I'm going to share it with you right now. What you just saw is Corinna St. Jean-Pierre, whatever her name is, I don't even care, continuing the lie, continuing to tell America not to believe your eyes and ears. The latest excuse about Thursday's debate night catastrophe is now he had jet lag. That's why he didn't perform well. He was also, he also had a cold. That's why he didn't perform well. To say that this right wing, extreme, radical, left, woke mafia mob is panicking is a profound understatement. They have changed and swapped and flip flopped their story in the past five days a lot more than I've ever seen in the history of political. Uh, 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 narratives of all, I mean, ever. I've never seen anything like it. And then just today, in his first public appearance in the entire day, right before the 4th of July, Biden does this, exiting after a Medal of Honor uh, ceremony, probably the fastest I've ever seen a president exit a ceremony after making pre-prepared remarks and completely ignoring the media. Watch this. Let me know in the comments, have you ever seen a president leave a ceremony? Like he was like running out of there. I've never seen anything like it. You know, all during a time period where there's so much scrutiny, so much criticism, so much speculation, so many question marks, about your neurocognitive abilities, your mental acuity, your ability to run the country, your ability to be the leader of the free world. When a time you have so many opportunities to prove and actually do your, your execute your oath of office, which is make the American people that you represent feel secure and assured in your leadership, you hightail it out of there? I mean, faster than a speeding train? That's what you do to prove that that you're okay. That's what you do to prove the Amer to the American public that you're a great leader, that you're able to continue your campaign, that you are uh, the best choice in November. That's how you do it. Contrast with this: Wesley Hunt and Byron Donalds go on the Sage Steele show, and I want you to really, really pay close attention. I think this is the most powerful story ever. And I'll talk about it in just a second. Watch this. It's incredible. We have lost seven United States embassies under his presidency. Yes. What does that mean? So we have embassies all over the world yes. in every country. That is essentially sovereign American America territory. Under his watch, we have had to evacuate seven, seven United States embassies. I did not know that. That has never happened in American history. So we never. We are. That's how weak we That's are. That's how America. weak we are on the world stage. What? That's how bad and, it is. Okay. Help me. What? Why has that happened? Why are we evacuating? Because there's no protection? There's no I'm a, fear? I'm going to gonna... say real quick, and I'm going to give it yeah, to Wesley. Yeah, yeah. When you are weak and our adversaries know you're weak, they push you. It's no different than, a, than the bully in the schoolyard. If you're timid and a bully knows he can get away with it, what happens? He comes for your lunch money every single week. Yes. Every single day. Until you punch back. Until you punch back. We have been weak under Joe Biden.
And so our adversaries around the globe, big and small, know that they can push us. Go ahead, Wesley, you go. You can talk. I'm going to give you my favorite, Trump, my, my favorite President Trump story. Listen to this. It's my number one favorite of all time. When we were negotiating with the Taliban, while President Trump was still the president, um, President Trump wanted to get out of Afghanistan, but he wanted a conditions-based withdrawal. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you do what we tell you to do, and then we'll start pulling troops back slowly as long as you abide by our rules. It's President Trump Mike, and Mike Pompeo, and they are talking to Taliban leadership in the room, and they had one translator in the room. President Trump looked at the, at the Taliban leader and said this, I want to leave Afghanistan, but it's going to be a conditions-based withdrawal. And translator translated. And he said, if you harm a, a hair on a single American, I'm going to kill you. And the translator goes, and Trump goes, Tell him, yes. tell him what I said. Reached in his pocket, pulled out a satellite photo of the leader, leader of, the, of the Taliban's home and handed it to him. Shut up. Got up and walked out the room. Sure did. Do you know for 18 months not a single American was killed in Afghanistan? Sure did. That's the definition of strength. That's what I'm talking about. And so you could imagine that kind of sentiment being around the world. If we have an embassy in another country, no one's going to touch it. Because they're going to be fearful that they're going to get a Moab on their head. Mm -hmm. That's how President Trump rolls. This is the opposite of strength. This is the definition of weakness. And so now we're being feasted upon by other countries when our embassies are there because the Americans aren't going to do anything about it and they don't want us there anyway. Nope. But the point of us having an embassy there and the point of us having sovereign American soul is to be able to keep an eye on the world to a certain extent, to have that presence but you can't have that presence. We have feckless leadership. One of the things that makes our country amazing is, gosh, you know, for lack of a better word, I'm just going to be as direct as possible. It's balls. I've said this many times. This country was founded on balls. That kind of leadership standing up to the leader of Taliban versus what Biden did when we exited Afghanistan, balls. Our forefathers who risked hanging, who risked treason, who risked death, risked their lives because they believed that they needed to be represented, that taxation without representation, they believed in an ideal, a value, a principle that all men are created equal. And we are endowed with an inalienable right to freedom, happiness, liberty, so our, our country, Theodore Roosevelt, my favorite president of all time, if it wasn't for Theodore Roosevelt, it is 100% a fact, a truism that America would not be who America is today. We would not be the leader of the free world. He really started that because at, at Theodore Roosevelt's time, the superpower in the world was Great Britain. We weren't, I don't think we were in the top 10, France, Germany, you had other powers, uh, Asia that were really, really big. Abraham Lincoln saved our union, the founder of the Republican Party. Balls. You gotta have balls. Biden is the exact opposite of that. And everything Byron Donald said, everything that Wesley Hunt said, one billion percent true. This is why I say, I'm not doing this channel for me. This is not about, when I say tap that thumbs up, it's free, it takes you a nanosecond. It's not about, we, we need to educate. The whole purpose of my channel is to raise awareness. I think media is the greatest medium for that. We need to, because people just don't know. And people don't even know what they don't know. They actually believe MSNBC, CNN, and John Muir on ABC and CBS and a whole lot of corporate propagandist media. They just believe it at face value. Oh, yeah, Trump's a convicted felon. Oh, yeah, he can't be president. They don't see the chess. They don't see the deceit. They don't see the manipulation of the narrative. They don't see all the things that you and I see. That is leadership. And not one American soldier. How many American soldiers died during Biden's disastrous evacuation? 12 plus, 20 plus years? Trillions in dollars of taxpayer money? All the lives lost, and he just leaves like that? He just says, okay, we're out of here. And the Taliban, within literally 24 hours, the Taliban took over the whole country. Every military leader, every credible general, every credible colonel, every military leader and specialist says that was the worst thing we could have ever done, what Biden did.
You're going to tell me the choice isn't clear in November? That's leadership. That's strength. Never mind the fact that you get offended by tweets. Never mind the fact, even there's some things that he says, I even say, I've said it many times, sometimes he puts his foot in his mouth. Just like a lot of people. I put my foot in my mouth all the time. I love him to death. I think he's amazing. But yeah, there's some things that sometimes I just wish he would just shut the F up. I, I agree. If this is about policy. This is about looking at the real macro big picture of saving our freaking democracy, saving our republic, allowing our country to flourish for not only our kids, not only our gra grandkids, our great, 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 great ad infinitum grandkids. I want this country not to flourish for 100 years, 500. I want this country to flourish for trillions and trillions of years. It's just we're at an inflection point. That's why I say this is the most consequential year of our republic. This is the most consequential year, most consequential election we've ever faced since 1861. This is huge. But they're going to tell us, don't believe your eyes and ears. He had a cold. He had jet lag, even though he'd been in the country for 12 days. It was jet lag. And then the next day, he gets hopped up full of God knows what, and he acts like a raving lunatic again, yelling at everybody. Here's one more last uh, clip I want to share with you, um, just of that segment again, because I just think it's so amazing. Um, let's hear that amazing story one more time. I'll give you my favorite, my, my favorite President Trump story. This is my number one favorite of all time. When we were negotiating with the Taliban while President Trump was still the president, um, President Trump wanted to get out of Afghanistan, but he wanted a conditions-based withdrawal. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you do what we tell you to do, and then we will start pulling troops back slowly as long as you abide by our rules. It's President Trump Mike, and Mike Pompeo, and they are talking to Taliban leadership in the room, and they had one translator in the room. President Trump looked at the, at the Taliban leader and said this, I want to leave Afghanistan, but it's going to be a conditions-based withdrawal. And translator translated. And he said, if you harm a, a hair on a single American, I'm going to kill you. And the translator goes, and Trump goes, tell him, <laughs> yes. tell, him what I tell him what I said. Reached in his pocket, pulled out, a satellite photo of the leader of the, of the Taliban's home and handed it to him. Shut up. Got up and walked out the room. Sure did. Do you know for 18 months not a single American was killed in Afghanistan? Sure did. That's the definition of strength. I love that story. I think that is the greatest story of not only Trump's leadership and why the choice is clear, why I titled this video that. I think it's one of the greatest stories of leadership, period. I would love to hear your thoughts. I throw this off to you, Nez Nation. Let me know in the comments. What do you think of this? What do you think of what's happening to our country? Am I wrong? I'm happy to be wrong. Look, America, what makes America great is it's a meritocracy. That's why I hate DEI. It's a merit meritocracy. The best idea wins. The best person for the job wins, irregardless of your feelings. I don't, I've never used the word irregardless. I'm so happy I had a chance to use it. Am I nuts? Just let me know in the comments. I'm happy. I don't mind opposing views. I want the best idea, not my idea. It's my idea, your idea. The best idea. Best idea wins. That's America. So let me know in the comments. Please tap that thumbs up. Check out these videos coming up on the screen. Subscribe to our free newsletter. It's free in the pinned comment. And as always, God bless you. And may God bless America. I'll see you soon.